we're going to be learning about standing waves. And that's why I put this bear here who's standing and waving. Uh, before we do anything else, I just want to show you an animation. I think it's going to help a lot more to see something visual and moving. So let's just assume that I'm just going to send a, a pulse here. Uh, through a string that's got a fixed end right here. So that means that when a, a pulse goes through, it's going to go on the top, for example, it's going to reflect. So watch, you can see this little triangular pulse here. And each time it hits an end, it reflects and inverts and goes back and forth. We're going to assume no damping or anything, because if I put lots of damping, of course, it'll just kind of stop. So we'll assume no damping, and it just goes like this. Now, the interesting thing is, what if I put in another one? So if I time another pulse, uh, you'll see that they're actually going to sort of pass through each other. And if you concentrate on this top one, do you see it's going above, now it's going below, and above, and to the right, and below. See where I'm following. And if I do, you know, a bunch of pulses, of course, then a whole bunch of weird things are going to happen as I, you know, press a whole bunch of them. It just gets to be a big mess. But... If I can have just the right conditions, you know, they might reflect and go back and forth such that it looks like it's uh, a standing wave. And that's actually what a standing wave really is. It looks like something just going up and down, when in fact it's just a bunch of waves going back and forth. So I can uh, do an oscillation, for example, and see what this one here looks like. It just keeps moving up and down. It's adding them up. But do you notice it's not perfect? It's sort of kind of a mess. So this is, you know, what it looks like when you're not in a perfect, you know, standing wave. Things are, you know, kind of a, a bit of a mess. I could, of course, change the frequency maybe and see if that helps. And if you play it around with this thing here, maybe you'll get some really nice, you know, stable waves. Right now it looks like a big mess. Maybe I would change it a little bit and see what happens. But you can see I can make a big mess out of this. But the point of standing waves is this, that we, we are going to have this condition here where we have the frequency and the amplitude are constant. And we're going to be having two different waves that are going to meet in superposition. So they're going to be meeting each other and adding up in opposite directions such that this wave... Now, I want you to imagine that this wave isn't just static like this. It's like we saw before. It's something that's changing. So you notice it's sort of also changing like this right here. So I'm going to draw it like this. So it's really important for you to understand that this thing right here is actually going up and down and up and down and up and down. This piece here is going down and up and down and up and so on. It's so important you understand that. This is a moving dynamic thing. Now, as far as these points go, if there's a point that doesn't move or doesn't oscillate, we call them nodes, that's N. And these points are here that have maximum oscillation. So like if you're located right here, this one goes up and down and up and down, that's called an antinode. Okay, so these are the, the important features from these. And don't forget about your good old friend, the wave equation, which goes V equals F lambda. And the reason why we use that is because if ever you're doing any calculations with standing waves, if you know two of the three variables, you can always use this equation to tell you the third one. So just don't forget that, you know, when you're calculating things with standing waves. Let's consider a situation where we have a string that's been fixed at both ends. So it's you know held still at two ends. Let's say it could be a guitar string, a piano string, something like that. And if we can get a standing wave going in it, the simplest version of that right there would be something that goes kind of like this right here. So uh, something like that. And of course, keep in mind, it also oscillates downwards. So it's something, remember, it goes kind of up and down and up and down, something like this. Now, I just want to show you, though, uh, let's remind ourselves what one full cycle is. A full cycle is this right here. This would be one whole cycle here. And in fact, uh, if we're looking at this right here, then this would be sort of a half of a cycle. You know, from here to here would be half a cycle, and here would be half a cycle. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to define it based on L, and I want to define it based on the wavelength here. This right here would be one full wavelength here. That would be lambda. So if we look at this, what fraction of a wavelength do we have here? Well, if you look at this right here, we have, uh, let's see, we've got from the start going up and back down again, we've got half of a wavelength. Can you see we've got this piece right here? So I can say we've got L, this length right here, is equal to lambda over 2. This is going to be the key thing right here. We have got this right here. Now that's going to be sort of everything else then is going to be a multiple of this. So this one here is called the first harmonic for a reason. Uh, that's just because it's the first and simplest one. And now I don't recommend you memorize these right here. Just know the rules of the game, so to speak. So the rule of the game then says, hey, each time you have a successive harmonic, you just add one more node. So before it had none, now it's going to have one. Next one is going to have two nodes. So it's going to be like this. And then you just have to draw something that starts here fixed meets here and finishes here. So for example, I can make it go something like this right here. 
that would work. And of course, keep in mind it actually oscillates like this. That's why I like to draw the dotted line version so you can see this whole thing goes up and down like this. Well, let's see now, how many uh, half wavelengths do I have? I want to do multiples of this. So I've got one half, I've got two halves. I've got two lambda over two. Now, of course, that reduces, that just becomes L equals, well, two over two becomes just lambda. So there we go, I've got L equals lambda. But you notice this one right here, and this one right here, then this is double what this one was. That's why we call it the second harmonic. And then let's do the last one. So this one right here, for example, the third harmonic is going to be uh, like this right here. It's going to go like this, pass through this, and then pass through this, and then run into here again. And of course, it does the dotted line version. It does the opposite. Once you get used to this game, so to speak, the rules of the game, then it actually becomes somewhat simple to do. I'm just going to try to make my diagram a little bit nicer here to look at. Okay, so what is this one here? It goes L equals, and it's one half, two halves, three halves. So I've got three lambda over two. This is what I would need here. And of course, because that's one half, this is two halves, this is three halves. So that's why we call this a here third harmonic. And don't forget about your good old buddy. Remember, don't forget about this equation, V equals F lambda. Sometimes you might need that as well. This time, let's look at a situation where we have uh, closed at one end and open at the other end. So this end right here is closed, so we're going to have a node always here at the closed end. But the other end is open, so it's kind of free to flap around. There's no node here. This could be like a clarinet, a trumpet, you know, something where you blow into one end and the other end is open, like a trumpet. That's why I put this one right here. <laughs> okay, so the very first, the simplest version over here is something that goes like this right here, and then, whoops, I didn't really draw it very nicely here, but let's say something that goes kind of like this right here. Now, of course, it goes also like this. So this is something that's kind of it's kind of flapping sort of up and down. It's kind of flapping over here. Now let's consider what fraction of a wavelength do we have from a middle to a top. Let's see. That's this, and of course, like this, and like this, and like this. This would be a whole wavelength. So we've got a quarter. If you look at this right here, this here is a quarter of it. So I could say L equals lambda over four. That's my first one. Okay. That's my first harmonic. Now let's look at what happens with the next one. Remember the rule goes, each successive one you add a node. So this one has one node, and this one here then must have uh, two nodes like this right here. So then let's draw them. So this one here goes up, whoops, uh, something like, maybe it goes up like this, then it has to pass through this point. Then it's gotta be flappy at the end, so to speak, so I'm gonna leave it like that maybe. And this one here, of course, does the opposite, so it goes like this. Now what fraction do I have here? Well, I've got to count quarter wavelengths, just like I was doing before. I've got to do multiples of this. So this is one quarter, two quarters. This is three quarters. So I've got three lambda over four. And do you notice then, this one right here then, this one is one lambda over four. This is three lambda over four. That's why we call this, weirdly enough, the third harmonic, not the second. That's the key thing here, okay? So closed open has harmonics one, three, and five, for example, not one, two, three. And we'll see, does this really give us five? Let's see. So this one right here goes up like this right here, then down like this, then in the middle, and then goes flappy like this. This, of course, is the dotted line version that does the opposite. And let's count our quarter wavelength. So let's see, we've got one quarter, two quarters, three quarters, four quarters, five quarters. So I've got five lambda over four. And if you look at this right here, the first one was one lambda over four. So this is five times that. That must be the fifth harmonic. Now let's look at a situation where we have something that's open at both ends, like a flute or a piccolo or something like this. So this is going to be, you know, open at both ends. So we can't have a node at the ends. In fact, the first one here has a node right in the middle. Next one, by the way, has two nodes. The next one after that then has three nodes like this. All right, so let's try to draw something that works here. So this is kind of flappy on one end, and then it passes through this point, and then it's flappy at the other end, so to speak. And this one here goes like this. Remember, this is something that moves. It's oscillating up and down here and up and down here. All right, well, what fraction of a wavelength do we have? It may not be obvious, but if I draw like this right here, and then I keep going like this right here, this is actually one whole wavelength here from top to bottom to top. That's one whole wavelength. So what fraction am I seeing here? It's not super obvious, but it goes if it goes from top to middle to bottom, that's one half. So that's why I could say L equals lambda over two. That's this one. That's my first harmonic. Now the next one, let's see what happens here. The next one is going to be, well, it's sort of flappy over here, passes through this point, 
course, it has to go down and up and sort of pass through here. Of course, this one here is dotted line, so it does the opposite. And there we go. Now, what fraction of a wavelength do I have? I have one half, two halves. So this here is 2 lambda over 2, which keep in mind that reduces to just lambda. But see, that's just I just like to always write it, this is 1, then this is 2. If I just draw it, I can see them a lot easier. All right, let's start off with this one right here, then this next one here goes like this right here, then like this right here, then like this right here, and then down. And this one, of course, is dotted line version is the opposite. All right, now what fraction of a wavelength do I see here? Well, I see 1 half. 2 halves, 3 halves. So I've got 3 lambda over 2. And there we go. So I've got my last one here. And keep in mind, we should never forget to go V equals F lambda. Don't forget about that one. In fact, I forgot it on my second one, didn't I? So I'm going to go back up and I'm going to fix that one right there too. So I'll say, ah, don't forget about this one right here. We've got V equals F lambda anytime you need it as well. So let's look at an example here. We have an organ pipe, that, pipe that's open at one end and closed at the other end. Right away, before anything else then, I'm just gonna draw myself this organ pipe. So this one like this, and then uh, going across like this right here. Okay, so this one right here is uh, that one, and of course I've got my length right here. All right, so what do we have here? We've got its first harmonic has a frequency of 16 hertz. We'll have to figure out what to do about that. But what's the first harmonic look like? First harmonic goes from here, and then it goes up. This is the key thing that you can sort of generate yourself. If that's the case, then remember what the first harmonic looks like. The first harmonic says, well, let's see, what's L? L equals, this is a quarter of a wavelength. So I've got lambda over 4. This is a key piece of information then that we can use. Okay, so what should we do next? Well, if you look at this, they tell us the speed of sound and air. All right, fine. And we want to know the length of the organ pipe. Ah, so we want to know this. Okay, we want to know that. But the problem is we don't know lambda. Okay, so we need this. So we have to we have to find lambda before we can use uh, before we can find L. So how are we going to do this? Well, we have an equation that relates frequency and speed and lambda. So that's why we're going to use the wave equation. So V equals F lambda to try to get lambda on its own. So that means if I do that, I get lambda is equal to just V over F, which let's see, the speed is going to be 330 meters per second. Divide that by the frequency of 16 hertz. I'll need a calculator for that. So let me go ahead and do that. So I've got 330. Divide that by 16 and I end up with an answer of well, that wasn't very helpful. Well, I suppose it was if I wanted the fraction, but it'll be 20.625. Now, what are the units of this? This is in meters. Okay, fine. Uh, why did I do this? That's because now I finally know what lambda is. So because of that, then I can finally put it all in the equation for L. So I have L then equals lambda, which is 20.625. And all that is just divided by 4. And then I've got my answer. So let's just take our answer right here then and say answer, divide it by 4, and say thank you. So I've got 5.15625. Now that's in meters. And I want this right here in, let's see how many significant figures. I'll use 2 here. So I'll say 5 point, this right here, this 1 will round up because this one here makes it round up. So it'll be 5.2, let's say, meters. There we go. That's the length of this organ pipe. So see, the key was, first of all, I think it's important to be able to draw what's going on because then you can figure out your relation between the length and the wavelength. And from there, then you use V equals F lambda to figure out what it is you need, and away you go.